The Andromeda Galaxy is one of the best deep sky objects to process because it goes through a huge transformation. When the photo is stacked, all you see is the fuzzy core in the very center, and it's hard to believe that there's a full galaxy hidden in the image. Let's bring out the details of this beautiful galaxy. This is the flow that I often use when processing this galaxy. I do not always use the same steps. Sometimes I do some steps, sometimes they are not needed. Go with what steps you need for your image. In order to start, first ensure that this image is in 16 bits per channel. Go to Image, Mode, and 16 bits per channel. This image is in 32 bits per channel and needs to be converted in order to be processed in Photoshop properly. The method local adaptation will pop up first. Choose exposure and gamma. You do not need to adjust the sliders and click OK. The image has now been converted to a 16 bit per channel image. Create a new layer and set your threshold point. Go to layer new adjustment layer, and threshold. This will allow you to set the black and white threshold point for your image and is crucial to getting a nice even background and nice white stars. Adjust the slider so that it is in your data. Go to the eyedropper tool, right click and choose color sampler tool. Next go to the magnifying glass and zoom in on the image to choose an area that looks dark and an area that looks white. Usually a star is chosen for the white reference point. When you are done, close the threshold layer and delete it. The red, green, and blue levels for the black reference point are under number 1, and the red, green, and blue levels for the white reference point are under number 2. Before we begin, let's adjust the levels for the black reference point and make sure that they are all equal. You can see here that the data has been stretched a little bit. Go to each channel individually. and move your marker to the very start of the data. Even out the red, green, and blue levels for the black reference point and hit OK. When they're even, again go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels to move the white reference point. You can see here that the data has been stretched really far to the right and it has become broken. Grab the white reference point marker and drag it in and click OK. The red, green, and blue levels have risen a little bit from 6 to 10. I will again check the levels just to make sure they haven't stretched too much. They are OK and I will begin my curve adjustment. Create a new layer, then go to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. Select an area near the core of the galaxy and drag your mouse up. Drag it as much or as little as you would like to curve it and click OK. The red, green, and blue levels have risen even higher. To check these, go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Adjust each channel individually back down to the start of the data. The background has darkened, but the galaxy now remains more luminous. Create a new layer and stretch it one more time. The last curve in this curve are the basic curve, where you grab one data point and pull up. 
This brightens the entire image. Create a new layer to once again check the levels and bring them back down. It is important to keep an eye on your red, green, and blue levels for the black reference point in order to ensure that your background remains nice and dark. Create a new layer and do one last stretch. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. This time do an S stretch. Choose a point in the galaxy and click on the black reference point. Pull the higher of the two points up. This will brighten the galaxy. Pull the lower of the two points down and it will keep your background nice and dark. Create a new layer. And before I continue with this image, I am going to rotate it to process it in the direction that I would like the image to be facing. Then go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. This will reduce some of the star noise in this image. While the Andromeda Galaxy has a blue hue to it, it is often not as blue as it may be depicted in images you see. In order to add this blue color, go to Select, Color Range, Make sure that the localized color clusters is checked and choose an area of the galaxy that you would like to start with. Then go to layer, new adjustment layer, and color balance. Choose whatever combination of colors looks good to you in order to color your galaxy. I often just use the midtones and highlights and do not mess with the shadows. I often add a blue hue to the core in order to give it a softer white color and remove some of the yellow. Once you are happy with the color of the galaxy, create a new layer, then go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. This filter allows you to add many quick edits to your image, such as exposure, contrast, shadows, whites, clarity, and more. Oftentimes when using this filter, you do not need to use large numbers for these. If you were to say use 100 for clarity, it might bring out a lot of details, but it also brings out details in the background as well. I prefer to keep it much lower and mess around with the numbers until I find what I like. There are other options such as doing curves sharpening details, distortion or vignetting your photo, and a bunch of other options. Feel free to look around and try different things for your image. This is my final image for the Andromeda Galaxy. It always amazes me how much detail comes out in the final image when the starting image was just a fuzzy little core. Oftentimes when processing, I tried to use a reference image from NASA. While this image was not taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and was in fact taken by an amateur astronomer, it is posted on NASA's website and is one of the most beautiful Andromeda Galaxy images that I have ever seen. A quick Google search of the true color of Andromeda reveals the range of blues and purples. So when making my Andromeda images, I choose to make them blue after this stunning Andromeda photo. 
I highly encourage you to look up photos from NASA to reference as you process your images. Or if you would like to make it your own, that is okay as well. These are just the basic steps to help you find what works best for you and your images.